So before we get started, I want to put out a disclaimer that this podcast is in no way, shape, or form is to come off as racist or to spread hateful messages. I'm simply trying to have an open and meaningful conversation with the intent on speaking for both sides of the story so everyone can have a voice and an opinion on this matter. Now with that being said, let's get into the show. Welcome to the Buick Outdoors Podcast. I'm your host, Shelton Marion, and on this podcast, we dive deep into the outdoors. We discuss hunting and fishing techniques, give you tips and tricks, tell stories, and everything in between to help you enjoy the outdoors. This podcast is brought to you by Northbound Gear. Northbound Gear makes some of the best affordable outdoor gear on the market today. I have all of their pants, their tactical jacket, and the Apex jacket. I can't say anything but good things about their clothing, and I wear this stuff daily. I just put the Adventure Water Resistant Pants and the Apex Waterproof Jacket to the test on my latest overnight ice fishing trip, where the wind chill made the temperature drop down to minus 41, and it kept me warm and dry. If you want to check out their lineup of clothing and accessories, head over to northboundgear.co and use my promo code SHELDON15 at checkout to receive 15% off your order. That's northboundgear.co and use my promo code SHELDON, the number 1, and the number 5 at checkout to save 15% off your order. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Buick Outdoors podcast. If you're new around here, I'm your host Sheldon Marion. Uh, A couple of things here, if you're watching this on YouTube and you got things to do, you can find us on all major podcast platforms. Just search up the Buick Outdoors podcast and you'll find us on Spotify, Apple, Google, all those great places, and iHeartRadio. Also, if you're listening to this and you want to watch it, uh, just go to our Buick Outdoors YouTube page, and you'll find a little podcast playlist that you can watch this one and other ones from the past. Uh, Today, we're going to be covering a a pretty controversial subject. Uh, It's the proposed moose hunting regulation changes in the BC Peace region. And basically what I'm going to be doing is reading off the article from the BC Wildlife Federation website. Uh, It starts off by saying, BC trades away outdoor recreation rights to continue industrial encroachment in the Peace region. Now, right off the hop, it already sounds bad. Uh... They go on to say, uh, for immediate release, March 10th, 2022, and there's an update, says moose harvest for BC hunters slashed as a result of a court ruling that cites cumulative impacts of industrial activity impacting treaty rights. Again, there is some pretty big and powerful words being spoken there. And uh, I have voiced my opinion on this already uh but it's such such a touchy subject that i think we kind of need to do like a uh kind of like a breakdown of it kind of dive into this and really like actually discuss it because right now the only thing that's happening is one side is kind of yelling at the other side and there's nobody actually talking about it and having like a discussion you know, it's just kind of like hatred from one side is getting thrown onto the other side and back and forth. And nobody's actually having a conversation. Uh, I, you know, so I'd, I'm trying my best to do this without uh, stirring the pot too much. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's one of those things I think it needs to be talked about and it doesn't help. I am kind of terrible at my own English language, you know, when it comes to being politically correct. Uh, it's just not in my vocabulary. So there are going to be some things that I say. You might not quite hear it the way that I say it, kind of a thing. Uh, not trying to be hateful, not trying to be racist or any anything like that whatsoever. That's why I put a disclaimer at the start of this podcast. Uh, but... With that being said, let's get into this article. So it starts off by saying, 
a government proposal will see the moose harvest for local resident hunters cut by as much as 50% in the Peace Liard River region of northeastern BC. Caribou hunting will be closed across the region for all licensed hunters. So it starts off strong. Uh, and again, you know, it comes back to they're just kind of throwing ideas out there. And for some reason, it sticks to the wall and they roll with it. Uh, and it's honestly, it's not science based uh, research or anything like that. They're just kind of spitballing ideas and going with it. Uh, it goes on to say the government of BC has negotiated a deal that will see 195 forestry oil and gas projects proceed in the traditional territory of the Blueberry River First Nations. Another 20 industrial projects in Blueberry Territory are still up for negotiation, according to the Ministry of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. So, it kind of, it touches on the subject where instantly you already know that this isn't for wildlife. Uh, right there, it states that this is just so we can get permits to continue to work in the area. Uh, the government has abandoned decades of science-based wildlife management, according to BC Wildlife Federation Executive Director Jesse, Jesse Zeman. This is not a sustainability issue. The proposed agreement will severely curtail moose hunting for British Columbians in areas with the highest Moose densities in BC while negotiations on permitting for industrial activities continue. So with that being said, I keep saying it over and over and over again. That this kind of stuff where they're curtailing uh, moose hunting in some areas, it is a good thing. Uh, places like Management Unit 745, we do need moose to be on limited entry however in other areas moose are doing great we don't need this and these are the topics and discussions that aren't happening they're just kind of grouping everything together into one little ball and just going with it uh goes on to say here that sustainable caribou and moose hunting in the Peace Liard currently supports 5,957 resident hunters and their families who spend a combined 56,000 days enjoying supernatural BC. These everyday British Columbians also put more than $18.4 million in hunting related expenditures. So as you can see there, it's going to impact a ton of people. Uh, and there is a ton of money in the hunting industry. The problem that BC government is having is they need to balance between hunting industry and forestry and logging industry and mining industries. Uh, really, the mining kind of hurts us a bit. Some oil and gas hurts us a bit. Forestry really hurts because they have some very, very bad practices like clear-cut logging and stuff like that. Uh, you know, there's parts out here where you can see a couple miles uh, on one hillside because there's just no windrows of trees or anything like that. There's no, uh, there's nothing like in your line of sight. So if there was a moose a mile away, I can see him walking. If I can see him, a wolf or bear can see him and that's basically a dead moose so there there are some practices that should be changed to go with this and again it should be part of the conversation should be part of the story uh this whole thing it's like there's so many branches and different avenues and stuff that everything is all connected but they're not having those conversations they're not connecting the dots they're just, again, bundling it all up into one problem and focusing on that one problem. And we'll get into that here in just a minute. So among the expected impacts of the deal, the number of BC residents 
allowed to harvest moose for food in the region reduced by 70 to 80 percent. A loss of more than 14 to 16 million dollars in hunting related economic activity from resident hunters. The allowable harvest of moose reduced to fewer than 650 animals from a population that can support a sustainable annual harvest of 4,801 to 7,455. And again, this goes back to the area by area basis. We have management units for a reason. We don't have 7B. We have 731, 732, 733, all the way up to, you know, whatever it is, 757 or 758. And that is because in each management unit, there is different populations in each one. Like, again, 745, I really talk about that one because that's where I live. That's where I'm in the bush almost every single day. I have trail cameras. I take my side-by-side. -side, I hike. I walk. I drive. I see a ton of uh, bush out here. And in 745, it's its own, it has its own problems. Now, if I go over to, say, 732 or 733, whatever it is, by, like, Cecil Lake Country, there's a lot of moose. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there is still a good number of moose out there. Do they need limited entry out there? No. So, again, go area by area. Don't do limited entry for Cecil area. But you do need limited entry for 745. That is why we have management units but instead they're grouping everything together as one whole group which is the treaty 8 territory and saying that we need to close everything down which is not what i agree with there's been a lot of speculation and people send me some pretty uh colorful messages and comments and uh what they are reading is not what i'm saying so it goes on to say here, ordinary British Columbians who hunt for food are being traded off in favor of resource extraction. And that I 100% agree with. Uh, basically, Blueberry River First Nations are kind of in a way holding kind of BC's hostage almost. And they are not allowing any new permits to be issued until they resolve the moose hunting issues. And again, it's per area. See, with Blueberry River First Nations, they are in the 745 area. So what they see is what I see, which is not good. However, Treaty 8 is massive. If you look at the Treaty 8 map, it goes all the way down from like Grand Cache area, all the way up north into the Northwest Territories to like Great Slave Lake. And the east border is the whole Rocky Mountain Range all the way up into the Yukon and then it goes all the way west into like northern Saskatchewan. Now I believe the native bands around here can only have a say in what happens in the BC side of things and right now out of all the bands there's only one and I and I don't mean to pick on them but there's only one that has an issue uh, with these new permits it seems like every other band has agreements drawn out everybody has contracts signed or whatever the case is I'm not a part of that stuff but nobody has an issue other than the one band and because of this one band they are basically putting some BC residents through hell uh, it goes on to say here the BC wildlife uh, Federation is concerned that this is the tip of the iceberg and that these kind of deals are coming to parks, campsites, streams, and lakes in British Columbia. After two years of this pandemic, the province should be encouraging British Columbians to get outside and enjoy nature. Instead, it's telling them they're not welcome in the peace and they should stay at home. The government's approach puts science, fish, wildlife, and habitat as well as the mental and physical well-being of present and future generations of British Columbians last. And 
I kind of agree with that. Again, if if one band out of the however many are out here, I can't remember how many, it's whatever, that doesn't really matter. But if one band is able to do this, where they have put not just one industry on hold, but oil and gas, forestry, and mining, that's three major industries all on hold, and they're the only industries that really make us money up in the north. If they're able to put those guys kind of in a hostage situation, what's going to stop them from saying no more trapping licenses are being uh, approved, no more cabins are being approved, all of a sudden campsites, streams, lakes, uh, what else did they say here, parks, you know, what if they start saying those are part of our treaty rights and our territories as well and we don't want you guys coming on here because of whatever that kind of stuff it, really if you stop people from going to a, a campsite where it's 20 bucks a day it's not really going to hurt the economy much however they're holding oil and gas forestry and mining kind of hostage and they're stopping us from making any money up here and developing and they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot too because with a lot of these jobs nowadays uh with all new permits from my understanding part of the permit process is you have to have so many liaisons from these uh different bands and, and uh you're putting those guys to work so they come out as liaisons and environmentalists and stuff like that and they are part of the job and they oversee uh 99% of the work to make sure that you're not doing anything that's going to harm the environment and it puts them to work in places where they might not be able to get jobs for themselves if they didn't have uh, these deals put in place with the industries. Do you want to become part of the Buick Outdoors team, represent one of the best Northern BC YouTube channels and help us grow? If you do, then check out our brand new online store. We have a bunch of new merch set up and ready to sell. We have everything from hats, shirts, sweaters, cups, mugs, backpacks, pillows, and the list goes on. It's also made for men, women, children, toddlers, and we even have something for your pets. We have several designs to choose from and a bunch of different colors and sizes. Head over to shop.spreadshirt.ca slash Buick Outdoors to check it out. That's shop.spreadshirt.ca slash Buick Outdoors and join the team today. Uh, then it goes on to say the settlement was mandated by the court to address a very specific issue. The Supreme Court of British Columbia ruled late last year that the Blueberry River First Nations treaty rights to hunt, trap, and fish in the territory have been breached by allowing industrial development in Blueberry's territory at an extensive scale. Now this is where it gets very touchy because the Blueberry River First Nations, they're, it almost seems like they're trying to say that all of Treaty 8 is their territorial land uh, or their traditional land, which to me is not true whatsoever. There's reasons why there's different bands in different areas uh, you know, what happens, say, out by Hudson Hope should not affect Blueberry whatsoever. Moberly River First Nations, Halfway River First Nations, absolutely. Because that is relatively close to their side of the world. The Blueberry Natives, way back when, would have no reason whatsoever to go over there. A little snidbit that I read was the reason why Red Creek is called Red Creek is because one band was trying to fight another band for territory and they killed off so many of each other that the creek ran red with blood. So that's why it's called Red Creek. So you you hear stories like that and you it's hard to really convince a guy that what happens in one area really affects these guys over here kind of a thing. And the problem with that is 
one band from one small portion of the province is holding like a third of the province hostage. You know, what happens up in, say, mile 132, 135 country, there was a ton of drilling up there. There was uh, some issues with the moose population up there because of that. However, that's not a part of what I would call Blueberry's traditional lands. Uh, around here in 745, the logging industry, absolutely. They're clear-cutting like crazy around here. That would affect Blueberry's traditional lands because this is where they are from. This is where they live. Historically speaking, I'm assuming, again, I assume a lot of stuff. I'm assuming this is where they've always been. So, yeah, I would consider this their traditional land. However, there's very little new drilling happening up here. There's no mining here whatsoever. But there is logging. So if you want to make a deal with the government about logging in this area, in your traditional area, absolutely. Go for it. However, you can't shut down mining where there's no mining. It's it's a very weird, odd, touchy subject. And to me, it seems like it has a lot to do with greed. Uh, I'm not going to go into that overly too much because then that starts to sound very, very bad. And yeah... I don't know, it's, there's a lot of gray area with this whole subject, and the problem is, like, this is where, again, it's, it just keeps going back to the specific areas, the management units. If we're not going to use management units as management units, then why do we have them? Get rid of them. Just call Treaty 8, 7B, hunting regulations is one rule for every single area, and just be done with it which is seems like what they're trying to do and I don't agree with that whatsoever so we'll keep going here keep reading this article and it says according to the court's ruling the cumulative effects from a range of provincially authorized activities projects and developments associated with oil and gas forestry mining hydroelectric infrastructure agricultural clearing and other activities within an adjacent adjacent not even in their lands to their traditional territory uh, that has resulted in significant adverse impacts on the meaningful exercise of their treaty rights and that amount to a breach of the treaty <sighs> so again it comes back to this traditional territory i think they really need to break down where the traditional territory is and then give each band whatever authority in their traditional territories only. Again, what happens way up north in, say, Fort Nelson doesn't affect Blueberry. Blueberry is in the Blueberry River area, not Fort Nelson. Same thing with, like, Moberly. What happens on, say, Moberly Lake? shouldn't affect the guys that are up in Prophet River. You know, they need to take Treaty 8 and almost break that down into management units as well. Uh, and then that way, they still have a say, but it's a say where they actually live and where they actually uh, have their traditional territories. Now, I'm not saying that they don't go to them other areas and do uh, some... Uh, some hunting and fishing, maybe trapping kind of a thing. However, if you're going to use wording like you're traditional, it's not tradition for them to go over there. So continuing on with this article, the BC Wildlife uh, Federation has similar concerns as outlined in Blueberry's case against BC and in fact declined to testify on behalf of the province. So again, the BC Wildlife Federation, they did see a decline in moose. But again, it was science-based numbers. They seen that in some areas, 
Moose are doing good. In other areas, moose are doing bad. So they were focusing on that. Where blueberry are saying, nope, the entire Treaty 8 is our traditional territory. And we want, it seems like, they want control of the whole territory. But again, there's more than one uh, band. There are several groups of First Nations that are all affected by this, but they're in, they're affected in different ways. Again, it's per area. They keep talking about the Treaty Eight territory, and again, the territory is is humongous. It's like a third of the province, and so like when they keep saying you know they're infringing upon our rights to hunt trap. In our Treaty 8 land. Uh, yes and no. And also it's like industry specific. Again. You can't mine when there's no mining. So mining isn't going to affect your treaty rights. Around blueberry. Because they're just there's no mining here. Unless you're. You have a gravel pit. Forestry will affect it. Oil and gas, not so much because there's not a big uh, drilling play around here right now. Uh, in other parts of Treaty 8 territory, there is mining that does affect them. But it doesn't affect blueberry. Do you see kind of what I'm saying? There's, and again, I'm not trying to pick on blueberry, but they're the only ones, it seems, that have a problem with this. Again, there is mining in certain areas. There's forestry in all areas. Some mining practices aren't that good. Some forestry practices aren't that good. So each uh, First Nations group has to go and talk to individual industries in their actual areas and discuss with them on how to fix the issues and the problems and how to go forward. So it goes on to say here, uh, for years, both Treaty 8 nations and the BC, BCWF have pushed the provincial government to focus on wildlife management and habitat restoration in the region. This proposal does nothing to address the impacts of industrial activities, nor does it provide support for the on-the-ground actions that benefit wildlife and habitat in Treaty 8 territory. And that is where I agree with. Uh, for the most part, uh, they want to shut down moose hunting for basically the entire North region when, again, it just keeps going back to this same broken record BS I keep spewing on about is that it needs to be broken down per area. Do we need to shut down moose hunting in Chetwin? I have no idea. I don't hunt there. I don't explore there. I have no idea what's going on over there. I'm pretty sure blueberries... Natives could say the same thing. But because they are part of Treaty 8, they can call it their traditional territory and kind of shut it down as they please according to this. Then it goes on to say, uh, successive governments have had more than a decade to respond to the concerns of Treaty 8 nations and stakeholders, but didn't. Our government is trading away the rights of British Columbians in order to continue unsustainable industrial resource extraction instead of working with First Nations, local governments, industry, stakeholders, and the public on solutions that work for wildlife and all involved. And again, for the last 10 years, the moose have been on a steady decline. Wolves have been coming up. BC Wildlife Federation and First Nations have been pounding and pestering the provincial government to do something about it they didn't same thing with the deer population uh around here we had a, a huge boom in deer population we had a ton of whitetail and mule deer then we had a couple of really bad winters in the springtime you seen dead deer laying out all over the place because they just starved to death uh it was a brutal winter lots of schnooks it would snow a couple of feet warm up and then it would get cold down to minus 40. So then it would create a big layer of ice. And it did that, I don't know how many times throughout the one winter. 
So you had just layers and layers of thick ice and they couldn't paw down and they just starved to death and died. A couple of years after that, the whitetail season went from a four point to any buck. And then there was also a whitetail doe season that came on. Uh, mule deer went from four point to a three point season. And again, that was to amend some hunters because everybody was complaining that there wasn't enough hunting opportunities. And instead of telling them, hey, sorry, just wait for the population to come back up, they opened up all these stupid hunting seasons. And all that was was just a slaughter season. Pretty soon places like Buick, which was like one of the deer capitals of the Peace region, uh, just got annihilated. Like there is very, very little left. Same thing with the elk population. Uh, it used to be six point or bigger bull elk that you could shoot no cow season then they went to a three-point season with a cow season again it hasn't really hurt the population overly too much but there is a decline in them now uh then they also open up the draw season uh and that's the late season draw i believe that goes from kind of november to the end of february i think or december to the end of february and that's any elk if you see an elk I think you have to be on private property for that one. And, uh, you know, so that started to kind of hurt the population a little bit as well. And now that the elk are slowly starting to come down, they need to reevaluate, reassess, and start changing seasons up. Uh, the deer, they've changed a couple of things, except for the whitetail season. They're still in any buck season. Uh, even if they just brought it up to where it has to be a four point, it gives the deer at least time to run you can stop grab binoculars look count the points and you either get out and you get them or they run off kind of a thing because a lot of people they kind of truck hunt around here but even with that you know that's that's a whole other subject our government is trading away the rights of british columbians in order to continue unsustainable industrial resource extraction instead of working with first nations local governments industry stakeholders and the public on solutions that work for wildlife and all involved again when first nations and hunters start saying hey there is a problem the government just kind of turned their back they said don't worry about it we got everything handled and all they did was just kind of slaughter everything so now it's getting to the point where i can see why the natives have done what they've done uh They've tried other avenues of this and they've tried to get it fixed to the point where now they're basically just pissed off and they're kind of done dealing with them. So again, they just said, you know what, we're not allowing any more new permits to be issued until this is finally resolved. So for that, I, I want to agree with it to a certain degree. Uh, you know, it's like push came to shove kind of a thing. Uh, the government didn't listen to anybody with any concerns whatsoever other than the people that were crying that there wasn't enough uh, hunting opportunities for deer and elk. So and they said, well, you know, kill them all then. You know, and it seems like that's what the government's kind of been doing for the last 10 to 12 years or so is that they don't want to deal with wildlife whatsoever like the whole wildlife management program that they have in place just sucks and over in alberta they have a lot of limited entry seasons and yes it is hard to get like your moose tag but when you get your moose tag the chances of you going out and getting a moose are extremely high where up here in the north peace sure we have a lot of moose but man there's not too many people that get a moose uh within the last few years uh, in some areas the moose population is starting to come up but that's because the wolves basically kill off a lot of them to the point where they start chasing rabbits and they start to starve out and die the wolves kind of took care of themselves but it took a very 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 long time to do it instead of you know as a hunter were able to help that process along along that is why there is wildlife 
management because you have to manage the wildlife. And I really don't think that message is getting really pushed hard enough. Uh, you know, there's sustainability, there's management, and none of it is happening. Uh, it seems like right now the government just kind of puts this on the back burner and just, they just go, well, figure it out. Well, part of people saying, well, we'll figure it out all right. You have people with the power to shut down entire industries now stepping in and figuring it out for them. Uh, but again, they're, they're not taking the right steps. Do we need help with the moose in certain areas? Yes. Do we need it everywhere? Absolutely not. The problem is, once they have this power and they get away with it, there's a good chance that they will go after parks and campsites. Will they? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, again, it seems to me like it is about a lot of greed as well. Uh, pretty soon, you know, I could I could see them implementing some sort of a fee or tax to go and camp on their treaty land. They're getting away with shutting down moose hunting in a good majority of BC. So why couldn't they get away with something else that's drastic like that? And that's where we need to start having these conversations before it gets to that point. So again, in, in certain areas, we do need to have limited entry. In some areas, we don't. And I'm starting to sound like a broken record but on one side of the conversation you have people that they just see the worst of the worst they don't see any positive out of this they don't see that a limited entry it will stop you from hunting for a little bit but the moose population will come back up they don't see that they just see them you're not hunting anymore you know which is just not true hopefully again what they get away with right now might snowball into something bigger in the future or they might do this just kind of one and done when the moose population comes back up would they allow people to hunt again without limited entry hopefully because that is how wildlife management works you manage the wildlife Right now, they're low. Shut it down. Put limited entry. Don't stop it from everybody. You know, allow people to come up. Allow people to hunt. Allow people to put money into the economy uh, with their hunting trips and guides and outfitters and all that. And then when the moose population comes back up to a sustainable number, open it back up to general open season. And again, per area. Uh if, if it takes, you know, the price of a hunting license to go up so we have more money to do more research, I have no problem spending twice as much to buy my hunting license and tags if it's going to these projects and if it's getting used properly. The issue with that is we have very piss poor money management as well. So we can charge whatever two three four times the amount of money for hunting license and tags but if it's not used in areas that's needed then there's no reason to do that and getting near the end of the uh the right up here says the bc wildlife federation fully supports the rights of first nations to hunt and fish in their traditional territories for food social and ceremonial purposes and other commitment to conservation and habitat restoration is shared between First Nations and non-First Nations, including myself. I have no problem with the First Nations going out and shooting moose. Uh, that is one thing too. With these regulation changes, uh, one thing that they also need to do 
is that they see that there's a problem with the moose population. Maybe do something as well. If you see that there's very little moose population, maybe slow down on your moose hunting as well. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying stop, but if you're making everybody else slow down, maybe you should slow down as well. Uh, you're being greedy if you don't. You know, you can't sit there and point your finger at everybody else saying you're part of the problem when you're sitting there pulling the trigger on a gun too. See what I'm saying? And that's, again, part of the conversations that aren't happening. Eh, it's a very, very iffy, touchy subject, but I believe that there's a lot of bands uh, that should almost be allocated certain number of tags per year as well. Now, with that being said, if there is 200 people that live, say, on out in Blueberry, they should say, well, maybe it takes whatever. One moose for two people uh, per year to feed them. So you take 300 divided by two, you guys are allowed to shoot 150 moose. Or whatever the the numbers are kind of thing. And actually make it so they're part of the solution as well. Right now, the only thing that they're kind of doing is they are part of the problem. Because, like I said, you're going out and you're pulling the trigger on a rifle as well. Just like I am. So you're part of the problem. Instead of just pointing your finger and saying, you did this, you're a bad guy, maybe you should try to help out too. You know, like it, there is a give and take. It's a very iffy, touchy subject. Because again, that gets into the treaty rights. You know, they have the right to hunt. They have the right to fish. They have the right to trap. However, when it's not sustainable to continue doing what you're doing, maybe there should be some changes. Uh, or at least self-govern. You know, when you see that there's very little moose, stop shooting them. If there's two moose left... And you shoot one. Now there's one moose left. It's not my problem. I wasn't the one that pulled the trigger. Do you, do you kind of see what I'm saying here? And again, I'm not politically correct. I'm not the nicest guy to talk to kind of a thing. I just kind of say it as I see it. Uh, now with that being said, if there is something that you want to do, at the end of the article, there's a section here that says, what can you do? says, please remember that the issue here is the response of the B.C. government. The B.C. government is prioritizing resource extraction over resident hunters and outdoor recreation with no science-based uh, rational for the conservation of wildlife in the Peace region. Uh, the B.C.W.F. supported Treaty 8 First Nations in taking legal actions against industrial development infringing on their treaty rights and agree with the decision of the court case. Log in to the AHTE website and voice your concerns in the public consultation. Use your BCE ID to submit angling, hunting, and trapping engagement. Uh, the other best course of action that you can take right now is to use the tool below to send a letter directly to your member of legislative assembly and let them know that you disagree with their decision to negotiate closures and reduce hunting opportunities for licensed hunters in the Peace Region. And then at the bottom of their page, uh, there's a little thing that you can fill out. First name, last name, email address, postal code. And it's almost like a pre-scripted thing that you can just pretty well sign and submit. And this is on their website, bcwf.bc.ca. Uh, you can read this up for yourself. You can come to your own conclusions. Again, what I keep saying is, you know, this whole this whole issue, it's kind of like a giant tree. There are so many different limbs and branches and bits and pieces, but it's all connected to that same one thing. There is an issue 
with moose population and wildlife management and sustainability. However, they're not looking at each branch. And they're not looking at each limb off of the branch. They're just looking at the tree and saying, cut it down. There's no discussion. There's no anything. You're not... You're not getting to see both sides of the story. It's not an open conversation. It's not an open discussion. There's a lot of lies being kind of hidden in the agenda. You know what I mean? Like, it's such a controversial subject, and it's so hard to actually pick and choose and pinpoint where the problems are when there's holes all over the canvas. There is so many little issues everywhere you look that you cannot just group it all together as one issue and say this is what we're going with and that is what the bc government is doing they're just saying you know what the hell with it this is what we're going to do we're just going to shut down moose hunting and just be done with it when really what they need to do is to look at each individual area do an assessment in each area right now they're talking about two massive areas, Treaty 8 territory and the BC Peace region. When you look at a map and you see how vast these areas are, it is incredible. And it is unfair to everybody involved to, uh, to group it all together like they're doing. So to give you an idea of the size of the Treaty 8 area, I did a quick little Google research here, and it says the treaty covers roughly 841,487.137 square kilometers of what was formerly the Northwest Territories of British Columbia and now includes Northern Alberta, Northwest Saskatchewan, and portions of the modern Northwest Territories and BC. And again, I highly suggest you to just search treaty 8 map and to see the area that one band has an issue with and one band is basically putting a halt to all industry because of whatever reason i think what they're doing is there's some stuff going on in the background and they're hiding behind moose population and moose hunting because there's nothing said about fishing and trapping. It's only about moose. And it's only the Blueberry River guys. And again, Blueberry River guys are from the 745 region. Same place where I am. Because I don't even know how to say it without sounding like just a racist piece of shit. Which I'm not trying to be. I'm just looking at it with an open mind and going, there's a lot more than just one band in Treaty 8 territory, but there's only one that has an issue with the industries that are going on. So why is it that we're focusing on this one group? Now I know one, ah man, the old chief that was in Blueberry, I uh, I don't even want to really get into it, but I'm going to anyways. And this might get me into some trouble or some hot water. But from the outside looking in, he was a very bad man. It was to the point where like half of the band all grouped together and protested downtown Fort St. John and protested in front of their band office to remove the chief from office. So now was he doing some shady stuff in the background trying to get some more money or have some kind of a weird deal happening? I don't know. Uh, thankfully, he has been voted out. So again, hopefully moving forward, the new chief kind of has a different view on some of these issues. And is actually able to work with the province. But again, I haven't seen the other side. 
I don't know what the province has done to them. I don't know what they've done to the province. Unfortunately, being an outsider looking in, I just see what's directly around me. And I don't see the whole big picture kind of a thing. You know, I don't know what's going on in other areas. And again, that's why I keep coming back to per area. In my area, it's not good. In other areas, it's, by the sounds of it, boost population has been great. Same thing with, like, uh, the caribou. For whatever reason, the caribou has been such a hot topic lately that it almost seems like they're kind of hiding something else behind that, like this closing down industry. But with the caribou issue, that's a whole other subject. That's a whole other beast. You know, they're closing down areas in the mountains where you can't even go sledding in the winter. And I don't know. That's another issue that gets people real heated. Uh, you know, when it comes to the woods and the wildlife, you know, there's people that hunt. There's people that fish. There's recreation people. There's people that like to hike, quad you know, everybody kind of shares this environment. Everybody shares the woods. Everybody shares the wildlife. But nobody talks to one another. And nobody's willing to share. As a hunter, those moose are my moose. Don't you touch my moose. And that's kind of the mentality of people. If you're a sledder, that's my mountain. Don't you touch my mountain. I ride my sled up that mountain. If you're a hunter, get the hell off my mountain. You know what I mean? And, like, I don't know. There's so many different avenues. Again, it goes back to kind of like that, the big tree. There's one big-ass problem, but there's so many limbs and branches and stuff that's all connected, and and nobody's actually sitting down with everybody and having an open conversation. Everybody's just pointing their finger Passing the buck, blaming everybody else, but nobody's also taking the blame for themselves. Around here, I took part of that blame because I hunt moose. The last couple of years, the moose population has been so bad, I didn't even buy a moose tag. White-tailed deer population has been bad. I didn't buy a white-tail tag. So, was I a part of the problem? Yes. Am I a part of the solution? Yes. I'm still buying my hunting license. I'm not buying a tag because if I had a tag and I seen something that was legal, I might be one of those people where it goes, well, it's legal and I don't have any meat in the freezer, so I'm going to shoot them. So if I don't buy my tag, I don't have that issue. Or maybe what I could do is buy my tag, come home, open up the wood stove and burn it. But then that's illegal because you have to have your tag with you at all times, even if you don't cut it. So, you know, like there's just, there's so many different avenues and outlooks and stories and we just need to kind of come together and realize that everybody is a part of this problem and everybody needs to be a part of the solution. Enough with the blame game, enough with the finger pointing. Don't blame me for something that you did kind of a thing. And also you have to have an open mind with this stuff too and you have to have patience is limited entry needed again certain areas yes is it going to be permanent hopefully no once the moose population comes back up to where you can have a general open season again drop the limited entry or issue more tags it's as simple as that well i shouldn't say that it's not as simple as that whatsoever but you know Again, I have a very open mind about this, and I don't see it as a complete closure and my hunting rights being taken away. I see it as a kind of a small step forward, somewhat in the right direction, but you still need some training wheels on, you know what I mean? So, like, ah, uh, man, I don't, I, I have a little bit of faith that this is going to work out but at the same time I'm very nervous just like everybody else and I think that is another part of the problem is everybody's nervous everybody's anxious about this and when you're nervous and anxious you get pissed off pretty quick and easy 
So, you know, you don't want to hear closure. You don't want to hear the word no. You know, it, people just panic and freak out and they go, well, you know, they take this away. They're going to take this away next. Are they going to? I don't know. I have no idea what's part of their plan or what's part of their agenda. I don't know if they have a big list saying, hey, we're going to start here and we're not going to be happy until we get to this one on the bottom of the list. Or maybe they just want more moose in their area. Unfortunately, their area isn't considered 745. Their area is considered Treaty 8, which is massive. The entire 7B peace region is in Treaty 8. So again, goes back to per area. They need to break it down. They need to have discussions. They need to sit down with the new chief and discuss with her, you know, what her plans are to go forward with this, uh, what she thinks a solution should be or could be. And again, you know, talk to the people that are in the middle, the guys and girls with the level head, clear way of thinking that will have a conversation with you. Right now, it seems like the people with the loudest voices are the kind of the extreme on both sides. You know what I mean? Like there's no balance right now. Uh, but that's where a part of like this podcast is a part of that conversation. I'm sure I'm going to get heat for some things that I say, whatever. At, at this point, I kind of like I, I really care. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making this. But at the same time, if you want to yell and scream at me because I agree with it, go ahead. Because at the end of the day, I can see that it is going to help, again, in certain areas. I'm not saying that you need to shut down everything. <laughs> and again, it's just a broken record. It just keeps going on and on and on. You're probably waiting for me to shut up. But it's nobody's having these open-minded conversations and i think we do need to come together not just as bc residents and first nations but as groups of hunters and outdoor enthusiasts as well you know everybody needs a say but everybody also needs to keep a level head right now it's just a lot of yelling and screaming and fighting and nothing's getting resolved and in the meantime, while we're fighting each other, they're slipping this other bullshit through the back door and they're going to approve of it. So again, we just need to come together, quit trying to rip each other's heads off, have a level head, have a clear way of thinking, and actually talk about it. My way isn't the best way, neither is yours, right? We need to come to terms with what is going on, and how to move forward with it, and maybe start working together with not only outdoor recreation, hunters, trappers, fishermen, but with the natives as well. We're all here. We all use the land. We all need to come together and actually come to agreements with this stuff, including industries as well. So with that being said, I think I'm just going to leave that there for you guys to do with it what you want uh you know i've said my piece enough times here now uh again we'll see what happens going forward uh i hope we uh don't lose our hunting rights and our fishing rights and our rights to camp and go to the lake or go to the river or pick berries or pick mushrooms take a dump in the woods whatever it is i don't know how far they're gonna take this but i think uh yeah i think in the end we just need to all come together we all need to shut up we all need to listen for once instead of just barking what you think is right and saying that nope you're wrong you're full of shit you know actually listen to people and actually have a conversation with them but anyways guys i hope you like this podcast if you did Hit that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're listening to this. Leave us a review, rating, and uh, yeah, try not to rip my head off too much with this one. <laughs> See you on the next one.